Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah and in this video I'm going to show you how I make this really cute finger puppet jungle animal slash train activity page for little ones. This is one of my bigger activity pages. I don't make it as often but it's so cute and I have a free version that is similar to this that I did a long time ago and I did a video for it too. The free template is just kind of a single use print and cut out by hand template is available on my website which I will link below however I wanted to update that activity page and add some jungle animals and just make them better I found that with the free version the animals were a little bit small so I just wanted to uh, do a second one that was a little bit improved but the free version is still available this version that I have here that cuts out all of these pieces is available on my Patreon, which is DIY Busy Books. You can go ahead and check that out if you like. And I have that Patreon set up for those of you who are wanting to make Busy Books in bulk to sell at stores or at craft shows like me. And so I have this particular template set up to cut on my Cricut machine or whatever cutting machine you use and it's kind of set up to cut up to cut out four sets at a time so I'm going to be working on making four sets of these and I'm going to film me putting together the first set so that I can show you guys what I do and then there are a few little pieces that I cut out by hand for example the rhino's nose I just cut those by hand as well as the elephant um, just because those are too small to really cut with the Cricut I find it's just easier to cut them out by hand and then I also have these numbers that I'm going to be using they are felt peel and stick pre-cut numbers I buy them in packs from my local dollar store here's what the pack looks like it comes in packs of 100 and they're just an assortment of felt numbers um, so I don't have a template for cutting those out but all of this that you see here is included on the template for my on my patreon page now the felt that I use to cut out these pieces, it's a really nice Korean felt. It's 1.2 millimeters thick. And I really like it because it isn't like soft and floppy like the kind of dollar store felt. Um, it's cut really clean as you can see. Um, I have gone through, I can't even tell you, probably literally dozens of different types of felt that I have tried to order both in small quantities and in bulk. And I finally found a supplier in Korea and I love the felt. I find it super reasonably priced. So I just order it in bulk in these big giant rolls and then I cut them down to 12 inch by 12 inch. And I do have that felt that I use available to purchase on my website as well. So when you go there, uh, you can, you're free to order that if you want to. Um, otherwise, I do have a link of other types of felt that I have used before. I don't like them as much, but you can order them on Amazon. I find that they're just not quite as thick and they are kind of see-through. So here's an example of that type of felt that I do order on Amazon. I don't know if you can see it like on the camera, but you can kind of see the outline of my fingers behind it. So it is a little bit see-through. However, I still use the smaller squares, the eight inch by eight inch or the 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter sheets of felt. I do use those for the page, like the backgrounds of the page. And I just like that because even though they are thinner than the Korean felt that I use, they come pre-cut. And so, and they're still pretty good. They're not quite as thick, but they do do the trick just for the background of the page itself. Um, so the link for the, this on Amazon, I'll leave in the description. And then the link to the felt that I like to use for my actual pieces um, is just on my website. I'll, use, I'll leave that link in the description as well if you wanna purchase that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do to start doing this activity page is I'm gonna take two copies each of my train sets as well as two copies each of just the bodies of my jungle animals. And I'm just gonna sew the outline of all the animals together, leaving the bottom part open so that children can stick their finger in between and use it as a finger puppet. Um, and then I'm gonna sew together all of the outlines of all of the train pieces, but I will always leave a spot open at the top so that children can kind of tuck the jungle animals into each of the train pieces or the, um, what are they called? The caboose of the train, the, the different carts. So when I sew them, I'm just gonna sew along the sides, along the wheels and the side, always leaving the top parts open. And as well, when I cut out, or sorry, when I'm sewing the giraffe, as well as when I am sewing the um, zebra, 
I'm going to cut out two little brown, just by hand, two little brown um, things for the giraffe. I don't know what they're called. Um, and then some black hair for the zebra. And I'm just going to tuck them in between the two layers so that I can just sew them in when I'm sewing the outline. So I've now got all of the outlines of the train pieces sewn together, again, leaving the top parts open. And then I've also got my finger puppets sewn on. I still need to hot glue on the details and draw on like the eyes and some of the details of the finger puppets, but I've got the seven of them made here. My elephant, giraffe, zebra, lion, a hippo, a monkey, and a rhino. So I've got all my jungle animals in there. And I'm just gonna put some of these smaller pieces aside for a minute. Uh, because I need to do some painting and I really actually should have done that first so that it's dry by the time I'm ready to assemble the page. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two 8 inch by 8 inch or 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter sheets of felt and I'm just going to get kind of my pieces placed where I know I will want them to go. And I'm actually going to be using some fabric paint to paint on the tracks um, the train tracks. Um, you could just kind of hot glue on some sheets of felt or you could use some th some black thread to sew on some tracks but I actually wanted to try using fabric paint so I'm gonna get this placed and kind of play with it for a minute and see where I want the tracks to go. Okay, so here I am. I kind of know where I'm going to want to paint my tracks, but I'm actually deciding I want to add some layers of hills uh, to make it look more three-dimensional and then to also make it so that there are pockets for the child to store their train pieces in when they're not playing with them. So I'm just freehand cutting out some uh, pieces of light green and, and lime green felt. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew two pieces on each set and I'm going to layer them so that they're kind of layered one over top of the other like that and I'm just going to sew around the bottom and the sides and I'm going to leave the top part open for both of them and then I'm going to use some green painter's tape to outline where I want to paint my tracks on using some fabric paint. I'll show you the paint that I use in a minute uh, but yeah I'm just going to get these sewed on in place and then I'm going to be painting my tracks over top. those green hill pockets are sewn on I'm going to go ahead and grab some black fabric paint right now I'm just using I had ordered this uh, brand called Castle Arts from Amazon and the paint seems to work really well my only complaint is that I'm not going to order it again only because I end up just using the same colors over and over again I mostly use black white and pink and so the other colors I don't end up using um, I'll probably just give them to my kids and I'll order some individual colors in bigger tubes next time. So I'm going to go ahead and place the two pages together and I'm going to tape off where I want the black paint to go. And actually my strips of paint are too thick. I want to be able to get two black lines but when I tape out for the first line I end up covering where I want my second line to go so I'm gonna have to do it separately I'll wait for the first section to dry and then I'll remove the paint and I'll do the rest of the track but I'll show you guys how I do the first part okay I've got that first uh, track painted and oops there's a little bit too much you don't want to put the paint on super thick you just want to Put it on just enough to cover the fabric and make it the color that you want um, and then you can go ahead and just like you would paint a house you can remove your painter's tape and we'll let that dry before we go ahead and finish the rest of the tracks i'm going to go ahead and 
um, lay out how I want my train to look. And I'm going to hot glue on some little squares for windows. And then I'm going to hot glue on the numbers in place of where I want them. And then I'm also going to hot glue on some self-adhesive Velcro dots at the end of each of the train pieces so that little kids can connect all the train pieces in order. And the way I'm going to place the windows is I'm just going to place one window on the um, train piece that has the number one and then I'll place two windows on the cart that has the number two, three windows for number three, etc. Oops, etc, etc. So it's going to be a number themed. You could also put like your child's name. You could put some letters of the alphabet, however you want to do it, but I'm going to do it number themed. All the train pieces done and hot glued on all the windows the wheels both of those included in my template and then the numbers are from the dollar store package that i showed you earlier and then i've also hot glued on the velcro dots in such a way that children can connect or disconnect all the pieces of the train so it's super cute and very simple to put together and a lot of fun i'm gonna put those aside for a minute i'm still waiting for my paint to dry i really should have done that first but while i'm waiting for my tracks to dry I'm gonna get on the details on all of my finger puppets. So I'm gonna start by hot gluing on the pieces that I already have, which is the hippo um, nose or mouth, the rhino nose and mouth. I'm gonna hot glue on that little kind of raindrop looking piece. That one was cut by hand. I'm gonna hot glue on the elephant nose. <clears throat> and then I also have a bunch of these little light brown bellies that are cut out on the template. And so I'm going to put one on the monkey and I'm going to put one on the lion and then I'm also going to put one on the giraffe and then also on that same cutout in the same color. I have a little piece here that is too hot glue for the monkey's face. I'm also going to freehand cut out just a couple of brown spots to hot glue on the giraffe as well as a couple of black stripes to hot glue onto the zebra. Also, I'm going to take some scrap dark orange felt that I have and I'm going to use my scallop edged fabric scissors to cut out a dark orange piece for the lion's mane and I'm going to hot glue it on the back of his head. So here is all the finger puppets completed, all of the details either hot glued on with felt and then the details of the faces, the eyes and the mouth just drawn on with a black Sharpie. And then the train itself is all done. I'm still just waiting for my track paint to dry. As soon as that's dry, I'm gonna finish my tracks and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. And fast forward, I have now painted on the tracks for both of the um, pages. And then I have taken some other sheets of eight inch by eight inch felt and I've just covered it and clipped it with some really cute fabric that I have. Check out this fabric. It is so adorable. It's got jungle animals kind of roaming around the town. So I thought it went really well with this activity page. That's going to be on the front and back. So it's going to look like a little book. And when the child opens it, they have this little activity to play with. And then in between each of these pages, before I sew around the border, I have these three millimeter thick felt uh, pieces of felt that I've just cut out by hand. Uh, with my scalloped edge scissors to fit inside um, so that I can put so that I can hole punch two holes into that piece and then parents can add other pages to it if they want because the way I do my busy books is I just connect them with binder rings and then that way parents can remove or add pages at any time and it's just a really quick and easy way to make it um, some people make them uh, in a different way but that's how I like to do it and then I also have this little awesome made in Canada tag. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So I'm just going to sew around the borders, put the holes in and I'll be done.
We are all done. So here's how it looks like in the end. As you can see, it's a little book. Children can open that book up and it's got their little train set inside with all their finger puppet animals. And then when they're not playing with it, that's what these pockets here are for. They can just store them in the pockets and all the pieces stay in there. Uh, for those of you who are interested, this, this activity page for all of this material right down to the tag cost me about $10 and it took me over an hour, I'd say about an hour and 15 minutes if you include the time that I took to cut these. Now I did cut these in bulk again using my template on my Patreon so that makes cutting time really quick because you can cut out the pieces for four of these sets in about an hour, which works out to 15 minutes per set. Um, and then the actual time to put it together took me about an hour, I would say. Um, and so I, it's up to you what you would want to charge. I hope you guys enjoyed this book. If you could please do me a favor and like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out so much and it allows me to continue providing these videos, making these templates, some for free, some through my Patreon. Uh, thank you so much regardless for watching and enjoy. I will see you in the next video.